In 1833, an Austrian math and physics student by the name of Christian Doppler was coming to the end of his assistantship at the Imperial and Royal Polytechnic Institute in Vienna. Coming from a family of stonemasons, Doppler seemed destined to follow the path of his family, but due to his naturally weak health, he was encouraged to pursue other interests. His mathematical proficiency was discovered by a mathematician in Salzburg while Doppler was undergoing his secondary education. This led to his eventual advanced studies in math and physics with a potential for a fruitful career in those fields. However, at the age of 30, Doppler was finding little opportunity for work in his fields of study and had to settle for a bookkeeping position at a cotton factory. Doppler was determined, though, to make a career out of his studies, and so he decided to sell most of his possessions, and he went to Munich to fill out paperwork so that he could emigrate to the United States. Upon his return to Austria, however, the very night before he was to make his journey, he received an offer for a teaching position in Prague. Doppler abandoned his vision for a career in America that night and started his teaching position in Prague in 1835. By 1841, Doppler had made his way up the ranks to Professor of Applied Geometry at what is today known as the Czech Technical University. During his time in Prague, he had grown a keen interest in the field of astronomy. He had been particularly inspired by the discovery of the aberration of light by James Bradley over a century earlier. The aberration of light is a phenomenon in which Earth's motion causes a star to appear at a slightly different point in the sky compared to where it actually is. While Doppler was studying the phenomenon, he wondered how the Earth's motion would affect the color of the star itself. Doppler took the consensus of the time that light behaved as a wave and compared light to that of ocean waves as a ship traversed the seas. Doppler took the fact that the frequency of ocean waves is higher relative to the ship when traveling against the waves as opposed to the ship traveling with the waves and said that the same effect can be applied to light. Stars would be bluer in color when an object is traveling towards it and redder when an object is traveling away from it. He presented his theory in 1842 and published his findings that same year in a paper entitled On the Colored Light of the Binary Stars and Some Other Stars of the Heavens. In this paper, Doppler not only proposed his effect, but also used it to explain that the reason that certain binary star systems have one red and one blue star is because one star is traveling away from Earth and the other is traveling towards Earth. Although many aspects of Doppler's paper, such as the previous binary star theory, were incorrect, the underlying principle was still there. Doppler's theory, upon its release to the public, seemed too simple to be true to many scientists though, and surprisingly, many scientists at the time tried to squash it out of mainstream science. Doppler, however, was not ready to go down without a fight. In June of 1845, a Dutch scientist named Christoph bausch balot who had recently received his doctorate from the University of Utrecht, designed an experiment to try and disprove Doppler's published theory. Balot wasn't able to come up with a way to test the Doppler effect on light, so instead he designed a test on the next best option, sound. His experiment involved a group of musicians on a train blowing horns simultaneously holding the same note as the train moved relative to stationary observers, who in this case were more musicians. These musicians recorded that as the train approached them, the note they heard was half a step higher in pitch than the note that was supposed to be heard, and as the train moved away from them, the note they heard was half a step lower than the note that was supposed to be heard. Belot, in his attempt to disprove the Doppler effect for light, ended up validating the Doppler effect for sound. Belot acknowledged the Doppler effect for sound in his paper, but still refused to accept that this effect transfers over to light waves. In 1852, seven years after Belot's experiments, a Slovak mathematician and physicist named Josef Petzval published a paper attacking Doppler's theory. A meeting on the Austrian Academy of Sciences, of which Doppler was the director, was called soon after to discuss the Doppler effect's legitimacy. 
Petzval was a strong supporter of the idea that all natural aspects of the universe were to be explained through means of complex differential equations, and since the Doppler effect is a result of fairly simple algebra, Petzval dismissed the theory entirely. Doppler defended his theory adamantly with two arguments. The first was through using the previous experiment done by Belot, and the second was simply by stating that a natural event can still exist even if it cannot be derived through differential equations. Despite this defense though, the majority of the academy sided with Petzval, mainly due to the series of inaccuracies in Doppler's original paper in 1842. A series of future meetings would take place on the topic in the coming months, with a final hearing being held in October 1852. Coincidentally, Doppler's health deteriorated drastically during the hearings, and he was unable to attend the final hearing. Doppler had been battling tuberculosis for several years prior, and perhaps the stress of dealing with these events, or perhaps just his naturally weak physical stature, contributed to his rapid decline during this time. Regardless, Doppler's absence from this final hearing was seen as a concession of defeat by many, and the majority sided with Petzval. The Doppler effect was then dismissed, and Doppler was stripped of his directorship. Doppler himself relocated to Venice, hoping to improve his health in warmer weather, but he would lose his battle with tuberculosis in the coming months, and die in March of 1853. Even though the Doppler effect was squashed out of legitimacy by the scientific community in Austria, it did not stop successors of Doppler from fighting back and restoring it to its former glory. Doppler's directorship was replaced by Austrian mathematician and physicist Andreas von Eddingshausen. Eddingshausen suggested to his doctoral student Ernst Mach to experiment with the acoustic Doppler effect. Mach did just that developing a series of ingenious designs to prove the Doppler effect true, despite continuous attacks from Petzval, until receiving his doctorate in 1860. Eight years later, British astronomer William Huggins published a paper in which he observed shifts in spectral lines of stars, further providing experimental support for the Doppler effect on light. Perhaps even a bigger impact Huggins had was collaborating with James Clerk Maxwell to help theoretically validate the Doppler effect, which Maxwell did upon publishing his theory of electromagnetism. Further observations of spectral lines done by future astronomers such as Joseph Lockyer and Hermann Vogel further supported the Doppler effect, and over the coming decades its legitimacy was inevitably restored. Christian Doppler was a victim of inaccuracies in his paper, compounded with an unwillingness of some scientists to accept such a simple explanation to a scientific phenomenon. Regardless, his underlying principle of the effect was correct, and although it took much longer than it should have, Doppler is now cemented as a pioneer in wave theory and is an instrumental figure in physics history. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing. Click here if you want to see more scientific progress made during this time period. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.